Speaking of taking it to the next level, the ESA, Electronic Software Association, I believe. Yeah. All right. In Illinois, the governor recently signed into law a bill that says retailers can be fined for selling games to minors. Is that yeah. correct? M- M-rated games. M-rated yeah. games. Yeah. All right. And the ESA filed a lawsuit saying what, Bob? Well, actually, just, just to clarify, it's not actually M-rated games. The text of the bill says you know, violent and sexually explicit games, oh. which makes it oh. makes it really vague. And, you know, supposedly you're not supposed to be able to pass laws that have really vague wording in them. They have to be really specific because people are supposed to be able to know exactly what is and what isn't okay to do. Um, but that is not the basis on which the ESA is filing a lawsuit. They're, they're going after citing the First Amendment for this, which I, I don't know about using that argument, but I, I'm not the lawyer, so... I mean, stuff like that has is, is kind of come up in the past. You think back to the whole Jack Thompson versus the two live crew right. uh, back in the day. You know, that was a big, big free speech thing. So. The Jack Thompson? The Jack Thompson. Let's talk about Jack Thompson. Yeah, okay. All right. Jack Thompson, he seems like the man. I, I, I had no idea he was involved with the two live crew. Oh, yeah. But he recently went a little crazier this week, and he went after what game, Tim? The Sims. The, the Sims. Sims 2. What's wrong with The Sims 2, Jeff? Nothing. They don't speak English. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, you know, th- th- this was really crazy. Okay, so so the thing from Jack Thompson in The Sims 2 is he's basically saying that the game is a, a, a trainer for pedophiles, that, you know, the game has blurred out nudity, but if you remove the blurs, there's all this, you know, graphic depictions of sexual content and, and full-on, full-frontal nudity, but that's not in the game. Um, I, I don't know where he gets the information from there are there are probably mods out there that might allow for something like that mm-hmm. and that's you know maybe he saw that and assumed it was in the real game and and since then i guess he's kind of changed the tune to say oh well, you know EA is letting modders turn their games into pedophiles paradise and, you know it's just it, yet again is another example of like throwing around a, a lot of really scary words because anytime you say the word pedophile everyone goes whoa what we have to stop what right he's just at this point trying to gain attention whether it's for himself or, or try to you know shut down the whole game business, I'm not really sure what the motives are there. But uh, let's say let's yeah. say there are some people listening right now, and they have heard about what Jack Thompson is doing, and they know he's crazy. Where are some good places for them to go to get a true education on games and their ratings and what's bad out there? Um, as far as game ratings, I mean, you'd want to go to the ESRB's website, which is esrb.org, and uh, you know th- they basically will list the criteria as to, as to which ga- how games are rated. And at that point, you know, if you're buying games for a child, you know, you can kind of look that up. And, and the, the key is to know the rating system and to uh, stick to it. And yeah. they can also go to GameSpot, I believe. To oh, find well, yeah, definitely. Information yeah. There. Yeah. We, have, we have that well, info. Well, too. I mean, even before they do any of that, they can just read it right there on the box. The label's right there. Yeah. If they just yeah. flip it over to the back, it's, it doesn't just have the rating. It says why I got that rating. It's going to be strong violence, you know, explicit sexual themes or whatever. They've got all the descriptors right there. Here on the information superhighway, there's so much you know out there to educate people on questions like this. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to what the talking heads are saying necessarily, or like the people like Jack Thompson who are just getting up and shouting. Find out what they're shouting about, and then decide for yourself whether it's an actual issue. And I, I hope there are more people out there doing that instead of just kind of going, well, all these politicians are, are going crazy over it, so obviously it's horrible, and, and video games are obviously the devil. Right. So we need to take care of this business by voting Hillary Clinton into office. Or we just watch The Daily Show, then I think everyone would be fine, too. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. All right, let's move on. So that's out now, but what big name is on the horizon for the PSP, Bob? Uh, Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories. That's out in October sometime, October apparently. October 26th, I think. They just released the first trailer for it. They've uh, released some information for it. There's a pretty cool website about it. Basically, from what I can tell, the game takes place a few years before Grand Theft Auto 3, like in the mid to late 90s, and they have a lot of great early internet humor mm-hmm. out about it right now. What do you know about it, Tim? There's a, If you go to the website, which is actually a really, really cool website, it's set up so that you're looking at an inbox for a reporter from the Liberty City Tree, the newspaper. And uh, there are a couple, a couple actual uh, jabs at uh, our man Jack Thompson. <laughs> really? <laughs> Miami attorney who uh, was one of the guys responsible for bringing the attention to the hot coffee fiasco. And he is the leader of, uh, or JT as they refer to him, of the Citizens United Negating Technology for Life and People's Safety which, if you're uh, clever, <laughs> clever enough to do the, uh, that's terrible. Acronym, that's that's it's, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Jack Thompson actually sent out sent out an email bringing attention to it, which I thought was pretty odd. He was like, "Rockstar, this, blah 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 blah." They made fun of me on the website. Greg, uh, mm-hmm. are, are you surprised by uh, by Rockstar including this? You know, um, 
I think that Rockstar, I think that the developers of those games are are a subversive lot and that they're different from the people, you know, having to manage the PR. So the thing I'm really curious about is, uh, besides being curious about the, the PSP game, uh, when GTA San Andreas gets reissued with the M-rated version, I wonder if they're going to sneak some new stuff in there. I don't know. I, I have a bad feeling about, or a very good feeling <laughs> about that new version of the game. I, I, I think that they may well have the last laugh, as it were, and even though that game got pulled from most store shelves, it, it'll probably just end up being one of the best-selling games this season, just like it was last last year. Let's talk about some of the crazy characters you find in the world of games, shall we? You mean, sure. like, you yeah. mean like Mario or no? I mean Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog we're, we're talking is crazy. We're so fast. We're talking real characters. Actually, we're not you know nothing virtual like here. John Madden, Madden? Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Jack Thompson. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Everyone's talking about Jack Thompson right now. In a true case of you know the lawyer becoming the lawsuit, we have Jack Thompson. <laughs> who has been railing against the video game industry for being too violent. Last week, he was asked by, who was it, telling him to stop using their name? The, the National Nymph. Institute of Media and, and the Family. family. Nymph. Yes. Nymph. That, that, they said, Jack, please stop using our name. We don't like what you're doing with it. And then this popular webcomic known as Penny Arcade, he's got a little feud going on with them. Right, Bob? Well, actually, it started all when Jack Thompson... He just decided all of a sudden he wasn't quite getting the publicity he'd been getting recently. So he put out this crazy proposal to Rockstar to make a game, a violent game, where you play a crazy sociopath who goes and murders, you know, major video game publishing uh, executives. He asked anyone to do this, he not asked just Rockstar. Yeah, that's yeah, true. He asked yeah. anyone to do this. And if they did, he would donate $10,000 to uh, the charity of their choice. So... Someone uh, modded Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and actually made the game that he described. And then he went back on his promise and he didn't donate any money. Calling it satire. Saying yeah, satire. Said, oh, I was said, joking uh, the whole time. Yeah, you, I, are you gamers all on drugs? Ryan Davis, where did it go from there? And then, so, you know, the Penny Arcade guys who uh, kind of got into this, this little barb with Jack Thompson because... They said, well, hey, that 10000 that's not very much. You know, look at how much uh, money gamers have given to charity through uh, Penny Arcade's Child's Play. And uh, at that point, he kind of flipped out on them. Yeah, he, he basically just flipped out, went nuts in, in classic Jack Thompson fashion, probably accused, yeah, just like, are you guys on drugs? Which is one of his favorite things to accuse people of being. <laughs> all gamers are on um, drugs. All gamers are on Thompson. drugs, and they all play in God mode, sniper mode, whatever that actually is. Is um, so basically, Penny Arcade went ahead and they donated ten thousand uh, dollars to uh, a charity in Jack Thompson's name. So uh, that, of course, sent Jack Thompson flying off into a classic Jack Thompson rage. So now he he went out of his way, he, like went and contacted the Seattle Police Department, which is where Penny Arcade is located, and said, "These people are harassing me with the internet, and they're criminals, and you should arrest them." And rah, 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 rah. Uh, hey, the, the, to, to my knowledge, I don't believe the Seattle Police Department has actually received that. Uh, facts yet they hadn't when we checked but uh, we checked back in with Jack Thompson he said you know we I hadn't faxed it over yet but they have it now so the we believe that they have it now but I think it's kind of telling that on the first round this fax made it to major media outlets you mm -hmm. know Penny Arcade themselves uh, some politicians but not the Seattle Police Department on that very first send sure. I think it's I think it's kind of telling as to the nature of all this it has nothing to do with any legal grounds. Yeah, and he had, like, the name of the website wrong in the, in the facts, the first version, and all this stuff. It, yeah, very, and all, and very all he, clearly. All like, he talks about is how he was on CNN saying how GTA makes people kill people. Sure. That, that, was like, that was, like, the body of the facts that he sent. So please arrest these guys that make this webcomic. That's a, that's a pretty much direct cause and effect thing, I think, right? You well, know, they, they donated money in his name, so... So sue him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How do you think the, the Seattle Police Department feels? Because actually what Jack Thompson did say in the facts is he said how that kid we talked about last week, Devin Moore in Fayetteville, Alabama, uh -huh. was trained to kill actual police officers. Obviously, the Seattle Police Department wants to say like, well, yeah, that kid Devin Moore is out of his gourd. At the uh -huh. same time, they can't really say it is not their place to stand up to like the video game industry, let alone two guys who do Internet humor very well. Right. Yeah. It, it, I, I have to imagine they got that fax and looked at it and went, well, what? 
Okay, wait. Okay, killing cops. Okay, we don't like that part. Right. Internet. What? Yeah. And probably just kind of like shrugged it off. I mean, that's, you know, contact with the police over any sort of internet or computer related crime always kind of ends up with with them kind of shrugging their shoulders the first time through and going, wait, is this guy knocking over liquor stores? That we can stop. This other thing, the computer thing with the funny, that I don't know so much. A jurisdiction is unclear. And at the same time, there is, I mean, there's no legal right basis for any of the stuff that the claims that he's making. So it's... It's all kind of ridiculous in the first place. It's entertaining, is what it is. It's Jack extremely Johnson. entertaining. It's it's. I think it's uh, it's good that you know this this big vocal anti game critic is not frankly more capable. <laughs> That's exactly what they're saying on, on Penny Arcade. That it's it's much better that we have this crazy man doing all this that everyone is coming yeah, to discredit I mean, you know, than he's, someone he's, slick. He's, he's got a message, and and you know it's like that that the core of that message isn't necessarily a bad one. It's like, hey, kids shouldn't be exposed to you know violent video games. It's you know, true probably true yeah but the way he go goes about you know getting that point across is just so over the top and so crazy that he's just impossible to take seriously i'd say the best thing to come out of all this is now the esa has ten thousand more dollars courtesy of the fine folks at penny arcade you mean courtesy of jack thompson <laughs> uh, kind of <laughs> yeah. his name it's so it's right my bad and what is the entertainment software association doing right now anyone as we move on to our next story crazies the rest wasn't the crazy strap part. yourselves no. in it's about to get crazy in here uh, yeah really, oh! I, re- really i think uh we it seems like every week we're talking about these guys and uh jack thompson he's suing the florida bar and uh stefan erickson the notorious gizmondo executive has been brought up with uh, on felony counts uh, where do we begin man yeah we, we begin and i think we begin is where we should almost end and say like it's great that these guys are crazy but come on video game industry who's next yeah, yeah. i'm kind of over it. I kind of want to go skiing. Totally. Yeah. This is uh th- these with guys Johnny Mosley in the, in San Francisco. Stefan Erickson. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite as sick of, but Jack Thompson. This almost sounds like a PR grab in his part. He's like, everyone's talking about Dietrich and Gizmondo. Remember me? Come on. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hey. sue the bar. Yeah. I'm the original crazy. Oh, I'm awesome. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe there was no Dietrich. I'm really disappointed by that. I, yeah. I really wanted to fi- them to find him somewhere well, in like the know, Malibu Hills, just like hiding out, like building fire campfires. He's just, there. He's on that yacht that got away. Yeah. yeah. On his way to Ireland or whatever. <laughs> With no clip in his yeah, gun. Yeah, no, he, whatever. Dietrich is somewhere hiding. Like, he's the bullet fairy. He, like, breaks into cars and hides loaded clips loaded under cl- your seat. <laughs> 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 You've been a very good boy. Here you go. Loaded nine clip. If you, if you put a Gizmondo under the seat of your car he'll give you a load of, a load of clip is that how it works yeah, yeah. man it, los angeles is messed up it, it, los angeles is fun <laughs> but yeah seriously if you want to read more about this jack thompson is upset that the bar has been collaborating with opposing lawyers in his lawsuits over grand theft auto and howard stern encouraging to file strategic litigation against public participation complaints or slap complaints yeah nice yeah they, they did that one on purpose i think i think you're right and uh stefan erickson he'd been being held without charges and now he's being charged i think with grand theft and bez- uh, yeah, bezelment and possession of a firearm so possession of a gun by a convicted felon yeah that's there you him. Go. important he, distinction because that sorry. makes it a he, way worse because he is yeah i mean does that count if you were convicted in sweden is that really the well, same i mean if that's what they're holding him on then i guess it counts all right yeah. or maybe yeah i really want well, i this, would hope yeah. it counts yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I guess that's a good point. So we'll see if that if if that investigation goes any further, or if Jack Thompson's latest grab for headlines is is successful. But right now, we want someone new. Come on! All right, E three's coming. That's a perfect stage for someone to get a little nuts. And the Louisiana Senate has passed a bill written by Jack Thompson and uh, Representative minors. Roy Burrell. It does. Yeah, this this law would fine minors who attempt to buy M and AO rated games. Uh, it's a $25 fine. It's asking game retailers to post a sign warning of the fine uh, in their stores. It also yeah, has some like, it, really it, weird language like, yeah, in it, doesn't like, it? Uh, the, the story, as it says here, draconian terms. Mm. Uh, you know, It's a lot of like the average person appeals to the minor's morbid interest in violence if it depicts violence in a manner patently offensive to prevailing standards. So it's a lot of the same stuff that Jack Thompson rode through like uh, the Two Life Crew era with, uh, you know, community standards and, and you know, for decency and all, all that junk. Now, was Louisiana the same state where like uh, police raided a house and, and grabbed video games from a murder suspect's house because they thought uh, because Jack Thompson told them to? I don't remember which state that was. It, it was, was in the South, there. though. Yeah. It was definitely in the South. Yeah. Yeah, Brad. That, that yeah. sounds like something we, we do. We have a lot of Southern states on the show today. 
hours. We're getting to the tail end of the show before we take the letters and the phone calls, the emails. Uh, we have our crazy stories. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go with this one first so we can just move on past this gentleman and let him... I'm really torn every time we, we pull a Jack Thompson story because at one hand, I'm, I'm a firm believer of we should, everyone should just get together and ignore him and it'll go away. But at the same time, he is so crazy. And yeah. Like you have to point and laugh. Yeah, he's, uh, he's out there. So, so this is about bully. Yeah. Uh, this is about, uh, you know, he, he theoretically got his way in that he got a judge to agree to force Take-Two to provide him with a copy of the game so that he could, uh, you know, review it behind closed doors and see what the game is all about. But I guess apparently uh, the judge did not stop the shipping of Bully, which is a T-rated game, oh, gosh. by the way. Uh, rated T for teen. Rated T for teen. And did not stop the, the shipping of the game. It's in stores now. And uh, also, Jack had some some pretty awesome things to say to the, to the judge. And of course, an over open letter sent to as many people as he could possibly think of to send it to. So hopefully they would all publish it and, and he then would get talk, all the attention. Yeah, and, and, and they would, would all talk about it on their podcast. He could charge more money for yeah. his appearance fees. Yeah. And uh, and then I get to think all over again about that uh, that track, Hey Jack, on that Two Life Crew album. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have to mention it. Read it if you want. Do you think that Take Two had the copy of Bully waiting for this like on a pedestal? Like waiting for this moment to come, like on a nice satin pillow <laughs> that like when the judge might have said something like, you know what? I'm guessing this game isn't that bad. Maybe I can get him to shut up if I just give in a little bit. Take two is like, there's the pillow. We'll carry it to you. <laughs> well, Kill didn't they the just chariot. show a video of the game? I thought I heard that. Well, yeah, I guess there was also a take two employee that, that was there playing it. And okay. they were using cheat codes to kind of skip around in the game or, uh-huh. or saves or who knows what they were. Now, the judge didn't like the game. You know, he said, I wouldn't want my kids to play it. But that shouldn't mean that the game won't shit. There's nothing in the game that you wouldn't see on TV every night. And then the letter uh, sent around to everyone has uh, some some great language in it here. Like, uh, <laughs> what you conducted in your chambers, Judge, was the equivalent of uh, Iran leading UN weapons inspectors around the country, taking them to places where the illegal activity was not occurring. I can see that. Totally the same. Yeah. Hans Blix, where are you? Exactly. Yeah. Hans Blix would not have let this happen. No. Said, Show me the rough stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me raw. He accused the Take-Two lawyer of lying in the courtroom. And uh, when she told the judge that a teen rating is an age restriction at the point of sale. How is this guy a lawyer? And then he went on to blast the judge, I guess, for not allowing a hearing to occur and doing it all behind closed doors. So there, congratulations, buddy. We talked about you again. Enjoy that. How dare you, Judge? Re- rewind it. Listen to it again. <laughs> he just updated his resume. Print up the page on our site and, you know, highlight your favorite Listen parts. Listen to this. Uh, this stuff is... Okay. Next time you promise a hearing, I'll bring a parent with me whose kid is in the ground because of a kid who trained to kill <laughs> him or her on a violent video game. Try mocking that person. I dare you. Uh, yeah. There's sure. better ways to bring about change. I just like that he uses the word <laughs> trains. Like the kid's got a sweatband on. He's like, all right. All right. Time to Play some more bully so I can figure out how to smoke everybody at school. Like, that, that doesn't occur. It just doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. I mean, Doom came out on Xbox Live Arcade, and for some reason, school shootings didn't like all of a sudden. That's because the online keeps kicking everybody off, so they don't get to play it enough. Okay. Yeah. Well, when they fix that, then maybe, maybe. we'll see some trouble. Maybe. How dare you fix the online in Doom? Points. I thought I thought I was calling that out in the review. Like this game doesn't have any points. What the hell? You played all the way through it and you got nothing. I know. They should have retrofitted it with a points system. <laughs> now, and we yeah. thought we thought Bully was going to come out. You know, get the review. It was going to everyone. It's a great game. It's a very good game. Play it, everyone. And we're moving on. It's rated T. It's schoolyard violence. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not that nothing bad. too bad. No but, one dies. Some, some baseball bats and yeah. And then we've got, a, we've, got a, be boys. we've got the full list right here. Boys, actually, boys are boys. Crude humor, language, use of alcohol and tobacco, violence and sexual. Which themes. like the use of tobacco, if I if I am remembering correctly, is just one kid has a cigarette behind his ear. Really? Yeah. Is awesome. that really using tobacco? But don't don't listen to any. Who cares about people hitting each other with baseball bats? There are dudes kissing. What? What? Oh my goodness! There are boy. There is boy on boy sexual conduct. <laughs> kissing on the lips. Kissing <laughs> with the mouth area on another mouth man. Mouth on mouth contact. Well, Fully this, this clothed. And this game got a T. A T rating for guys kissing. 
I, you know, the I, world is about to end. The end times are here, folks. It is such a bummer that this is a story. Yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's a bummer because obviously Jack Thompson had to have something to yell about bully, and this was it. So he said to the ESRB, "Your game, this game's got kissing with dudes in it, and you gave it a T. Good luck." And then ESRB said, or, "No, it's it's." He didn't even call it dudes kissing. He called it something far more insidious sounding. Oh yeah, we just found gay sexual content in bully. Oh, gay man. sex, gay sex. As it's like Jimmy what? Hawkins makes out with another male student, good luck with your T rating now, Patty. Which is great because then the ESRB came back and said, "Guess what? We knew about that. It's still a T." Yeah, because that's really not that big a deal. And guess what? Everyone at home, it's not that it's big a deal. Not that big a deal. In fact, it's such not that big a deal. Uh, we're moving on. We're done. I just, it, yeah, it makes Jack Thompson really look. I mean, a lot of things he says make him look really bad. Yeah, but dude. It's it's now really he just looks like a, a really creepy homophobe on top of all that. Yeah, I, whatever. Well, gay sexual content. <laughs> gay sexual content. All right. <laughs> well, oh, it's just dudes kissing. Oh, oh. Bull, bull, bully. Uh, yeah, I don't. What bullies? Is it eight point seven? Yeah, bullies. Awesome. Yeah, play and, it. And uh, the gay sexual content in the game, pretty funny. I thought it, it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was, it's not even. It's not like the dialogue's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. And it's not something that like you have to do as the game goes on. It's something you like. You can. It's all about find. choice. Yeah, it's all about choice. <laughs> it's all about my choice of gay sexual gay content. Gay sexual content. Hot, nasty, <laughs> fifty naughty hot ladies. <laughs> and also, the Take Two legal team needs more time to go after everyone's favorite crazy Florida lawyer. Who could that be? I don't know. This guy. There's this guy. Uh, he gives. Uh, Grand Theft Auto problems in the courts all the time. He's like, hey, do this stuff. And he's then, the guy that Two Live Crew wrote that song about. Exactly. Yeah. And he uh, and Take Two is like t- taking it to him. They're like, yeah, we're going to make Rich's voice crack and say, <laughs> we're going to stop you from stopping, trying to stop us. Preemptive, emptive strike or something like that. Yeah. Tell, yes. tell us about it, Brian. So... Okay, so <laughs> where do you start with this guy? So it looks like Tom, uh, Jack Thompson, of course. That's his name. I, I, yeah, I, sh- I, forgot, I totally if, forgot it. Just can... so the one person who's listening doesn't know this guy's name. It seems that uh, Mr. Thompson has filed a suit to have the game being uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, I suppose, declared a public nuisance, making it a crime to sell it in the state of Florida. Well, Take Two now seems to be heading that off of the past by having a judge declare that Florida's public nuisance law does not apply to this video game and therefore not making it a crime to sell. I think he did. Jack Thompson did that with Bully, mm-hmm. and they're trying to stop him from doing that with Grand Theft Auto 4 and Manhunt 2. Makes yeah. sense to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. And they're, like, they're saying the constitutionality of it's a little vague, you know, don't, don't make judges decide. It's a free speech thing. Jack Thompson's crazy. And his response to this was uh, pretty great. I have been praying literally that Take-Two and its lawyers would do something so stupid. Uh, he added the, the company's misstep would now enable me to destroy Take-Two. The pit Take-Two has dug for itself will be patently clear. You know, Take Two, we just talked about Take Two's on the ropes right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they may be sold off. They may be broken apart. They may be sold to a competitor. You know, you wonder if any of these situations come to a head, what kind of stance Thompson's going to take on this? Will he claim victory saying he destroyed the company or. Yes. It's not, of course, it's not going to stop the publication of these games. He, he will grandstand in any way he possibly right. can. Right, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Any, so, anything that could be construed as victory. I'm sure that the shareholder revolt when they replace the CEO, mm-hmm. because he's he's mentioned Paul Eibler by name several times mm-hmm. over the course of his campaign. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that that he'll he'll somehow claim uh, responsibility for that on top of everything. So, yeah. Yeah. so in, in case you're worried, uh, faithful listener, yes, Jack Thompson is still around. Oh God, he's not going anywhere. He's there. He's 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 kicking it. He's making it happen. He's yeah, praying. He's, he's praying. He's walking the block. Well, uh, let's let's move on from this and let's talk about Jack Thompson. Oh, sure. For the last time, maybe. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Dead. finish the, the fight. Witch, the witch. <laughs> uh, Jack Thompson, uh, after much uh, back and forth, was disbarred from the uh, Florida bar. So Just wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jack Thompson can no longer practice law in the state of Florida. He was given thirty days by the judge to basically pack up his shit. 
correct. Uh, although I believe he also has an appeal out there. So of course. So we'll see. He can still drink, though, right? But can he not represent Mas- himself? Yeah, in the master, appeal? master barrister the, that he is. You know, he's you know he's going to explore every yeah. legal option. But uh, to, can to he file his own appeal if he's actually disbarred? No, someone else. Yeah, like, so he, he has, has to have oh, someone he, back he him. He has up. he has retained counsel. He, he needs. To I don't know that he has because he yeah he needs to have a actual practicing lawyer he's back him up and there's definitely question as to whether anyone wants to get anywhere near <laughs> him and his remember when Hi- Hillary Clinton and crazy. Joe Lieberman were latching onto him for like a split second a hair's breath and then like it was like yeah Hillary standing next to uh, Jack Thompson and then like a day later it was gone like just no association whatever with that guy hey, that was enough to sour me on the Clinton campaign yeah. I was like I, was I was like I didn't I didn't think I had hot button issues but you you found one to, when, when uh, gaming found one is and you prodded it well, it's like just like you're you're buying into this. Oh, Hillary, what are you doing? Get a step away, step away from the shiny, you know, political gamer button, and it didn't work. Jack Thompson mellowed out in the last couple of years. You think? Yeah. Oh, he, no. Yeah, he he's got, still crazy. He's still crazy, but he mellowed out. He's definitely not as vocal as he was like three, two years. I couldn't ago. tell you. I stopped ever paying atten- attention to anything he ever said ever. Well, that was the way to make him go away. Once, okay. yeah, once, it worked, once, I guess. once like worked. outlets started just like not encouraging him yeah. to give like like give up sound bites, you just stopped hearing. Well, who was it? I, I wish I could remember who made the quote about like the game. Like somebody asserted recently that the game's press basically is what empowered that guy. Like yeah. if we had yeah, exactly like you say, you know, if we hadn't listened to and reported on just everything sig- he ever said, or, like like but he everybody just, needs would a be devil. Nothing. You, you need to have a devil. You need to have there. a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. We need he's someone. Foil. Like, he's, we don't he's a foil to our All our bad efforts. guys are make believe, and now we've got like this real guy <laughs> who's got like he's an old man. He's easy to pick on. And it was always just like threat. Like his power, like I, I like his, his sphere of power was. There was always this threat that you, maybe he could sue you. Do you know what he like, was? He to me, he was like pretty much. He was like Derek Smart without the video game making ability, or. <laughs> Maybe it was kind of close to Derek Just a gigantic windbag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They should make a game together. Yeah, yeah, just like jump on message boards together and like attack little kids. And what kind of game do you think Jack Thompson time. would make? Jack Thompson? Uh, it would be boring. Okay. Would be the boring game. Yeah. The boring game of life. <laughs> it doesn't even involve like a video game machine. It's like a pen and paper game that involves reading. I, I yeah I don't know what he would make he would make a game where he gets a lot of like the sensational game where like you have to legally stomp out bad games and then retire in a big home. I wonder if that guy has made a ton of money from from his. I shtick. doubt it. I think he's pretty much just like a circuit guy. That's, yeah. I I totally see him just running like the the Geraldo circuit for the rest <laughs> of his life. He'll just he'll continue doing it. Ah. Uh. Well, you know, it's it's the end of an era, maybe, of uh, legal action, like the gratuitous legal action against games for life's woes. Time for a new champion. I just wonder how much this affects his ability to, you know, provide Fox News sound bites. God, I hope Nothing. not. He no, on dude, Fox it won't News? stop. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, like, again, s- again, I don't pay attention, but, like, they actually give that guy airtime? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's That's where a lot of his... I mean, he's a great dude to have on whenever there's, like, some sort of tragedy and there is an inkling of a connection to video games you get jack thompson on the phone because he will talk all sorts of great crazy for you he will connect those dots for you oh yeah he'll make it he'll make an acronym he'll be like (laughs) and this is jack thompson from the glbc you know just like some (laughs) random he'll just make a non-profit organization then he doesn't need his lawyer thing yeah and then uh then he could still threaten to sue anybody who doesn't like him i will sue you I have your email address. I will sue you. Well, somebody else will sue you. Yeah, he'll have now. to. Uh, yeah. That's that's the problem for him is that it used to be that he could just do it as a matter of his wand is his, broken. His his job. Uh, but now, uh, now, now he would actually have to pay yeah, somebody, a lawyer. Yeah, somebody's going to be billing him hours now every time he tries to wave his his legal schlong around. <laughs> And I don't know what this means about his ability to practice law in other states. Well, you have to take well, it he'd, yeah, he'd have to. Yeah. He'd have to be licensed there too. I, I, so. And I don't know if uh, I didn't read enough John Grisham to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 